Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to be practicing one-point perspective. Uh, for us to do this assignment, you're going to need your uh, drawing, uh, your sketchbook, a ruler, a graphite pencil, a blue pencil, a red pencil, and a pencil sharpener. I've also grabbed a black pencil for me to be able to reinforce some of the lines I'll be drawing, uh, but you can use your graphite pencil for that uh, section instead. Uh, so uh, what I wanted to do is I want you to start all out um, by creating a horizon line. Now, you have to think about where you want to place your horizon line on your uh, sheet of paper. Uh, if you place your horizon line about a third of the way down, we call this a normal view. If you place it higher, you're going to create a bird's eye view where it would see more ground rather than sky. And if you place it lower in your picture plane, you would create a uh, ant's eye view or a cat's eye view where you see more sky rather than ground. For our purposes, I recommend uh, uh, putting your horizon line about a third of the way down in a normal view. And I'm going to use my red pencil to indicate that horizon line so that it's nice and visible and we can uh, easily tell where our horizon line is. Uh, I'm also using a transparent ruler um, rather than my metal ruler just so that you can see through it, making it just a little bit easier for you to see my lines and understand what I'm doing. But uh, I recommend using your metal ruler uh, for your personal drawings. Uh, this is just so that it's a little bit easier for, for you to see what I'm drawing. So as we start thinking about one point perspective, we really need to understand that uh, one point perspective um, concerns objects that are parallel to the picture plane. So if I were to make a, uh, a box, so if I make a box uh, underneath my uh, horizon line, and I'm just going to make that box three inches by three inches, I'm going to use that measurement um, for something a little bit later. But if I put a box, uh, and uh, if I put it uh, parallel to the picture plane. So the picture plane is our uh, paper. And as you can see, the um, bottom of the paper is parallel to the box that I created itself. Or in this case, it's just a square. And to uh, draw this piece in one point perspective, what I would want to do uh, is uh, think about where my vanishing point is going to be. Now, a vanishing point could be anywhere on your horizon line in one point and two point perspective. For our purposes, I'm going to place my vanishing point um, to the right uh, of uh, center. So here's my vanishing point, and I have a square that I want to turn into a cube. What I'll do is I'll take the edges of that square and I will point them to the vanishing point using my ruler as a guide. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for you to get used to using your ruler and using it well and correctly, mostly because you have to compensate for the thickness of the lead of your pencil to make a really good line. So um, that's going to take a little bit of practice. So I have the front of the um, uh, of the box, which again is parallel to my picture plane. I have its sides diminishing towards a single point sitting on my horizon line. And now I have to decide how thick uh, is this box. And as I make that decision, um, I want to make a horizontal line that's parallel to this one and this one. And then I want to make a vertical line that uh, intersects with that that is parallel with uh, these two vertical lines as well. So I just want to make sure I can reinforce that. And now I have a box in one point perspective. Now, just for fun, let's make this box transparent so you can see uh, the interior of that box. At the moment, that box is under our eye level, so we see the top plane, and we see the front plane and the right plane. But let's make it transparent so we can see uh, the planes on the interior as well. To do that, you want to start at the bottom corner, and you want to point your ruler um, at the vanishing point. 
Now uh, you want to take the edges of this back uh, part of the box and extend them to this line. So first we're going to make our horizontal line. I want to make sure that it's uh, parallel to this, this, and the bottom one. And I'm going to extend it to that interior line that I made. And now I want to make a vertical line. And this and this line should match up. So they should be pretty close at matching up. And you want to make sure that, that line is vertical. So now you should have a box that um, starts to feel transparent. Um, and what you can see is that the interior of the of the box, um, uh, you know, like is kind of elongated. And uh, it's because uh, what I drew, the, the uh, width of the um, box that I made there uh, uh, was, you know, quite rectangular. Um, and so really we can see this is a long rectangular prism in space. I'm just going to reinforce my edges in, uh, in my case, in black, but you can do this with graphite, just so that we can see them better. And then I want to also draw a, a box through the horizon line and above the horizon line for you, just to think about how that changes things for one point perspective. So here's the outer edges of that cube, and we can see the inner edges of that cube in blue. So let's stay with the same vanishing point, and I'm gonna put a rectangle here, and I'm gonna have that rectangle straddle my horizon line. So some of that rectangle is going to be above my horizon line and some of it's going to be below my horizon line. And I'm just kind of, I'm not measuring, I'm just making a choice here about how how uh, wide and tall I want that um, rectangle to be. I can, you know, correct and erase the, the edges if they are overextended. So I have basically like a column at the moment, or again, a, a, a rectangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the edges um, of that rectangle, the bottom and top, and the bottom of that rectangle is going to diminish up to the horizon line, uh, to the vanishing point, and the top of that rectangle is going to, be, is going to vanish down to the horizon line at that vanishing point. So now that I have that, I want to make a decision about how wide uh, this rectangle is. And again, we can play with, you know, imagination or think about imagination so we can make it as, as wide as we want. And what I want to show you is that here with, a, with an object that is straddling our horizon line, some of it's above, some of it's below, we don't see the top plane or the bottom plane of this object because both of them are inside. So again, we can reveal that by um, making the object be transparent. To make it transparent, you're going to go from the bottom corner up to the horizon line. And from the top corner down to the horizon line. And you're going to um, uh, extend the line from this corner to the line that you just made and from this corner to the line that you just made, making sure that those lines are uh, parallel to the picture plane. In one point perspective, again, things are going to be parallel to the picture plane. So now we've created the bottom and top interior plane of this object. And to get the back corner, we're going to use a uh, vertical line. And we're going to connect those two. So now we're, we see this object as, um, again, as transparent. And we can see that that top and bottom plane are on the inside of that form. I'm just going to reinforce these again in black just so that we see them a little bit better. So objects in one point perspective don't need to all um, use the same vanishing point. Uh, you can actually uh, have different vanishing points, even for objects that are parallel to your picture plane. 
uh, they just might be at slightly different, um, at a slightly different angle, uh, but still parallel to the picture plane. So let's do a box above and we'll give it a different vanishing point than the two that, that we just drew, just so we can see that example. And let's see, what should we do? Um, maybe I'll make a, uh, you know, like a rectangle this way. And again, the uh, uh, it's still going to be parallel to the picture plane, but let's say that its vanishing point is actually here. So kind of straight behind it. So we're going to take the edges of that rectangle and we're going to point it to that vanishing point. And what you'll notice is if the vanishing point is directly behind this rectangle, we're not going to see the side plane. Uh, because again, that side plane is actually inside of this box. Let's uh, give it a bottom. And then let's make it transparent. And to, to do that, we're going to uh, take a line from this corner, go down to the vanishing point, from this corner down to the vanishing point. And that's going to reveal the side planes as well as the top plane that is in the inside of that box. Um, now I need to, from the bottom of this uh, rectangle, I need to make vertical lines up. And then I need to connect them with a horizontal line. So now we again are seeing the interior of this rectangular prism. We see the top plane, then we see the two side planes and the back plane, which are all inside. Now one point perspective is actually really easy to do. Like one, you just start to understand uh, that the boxes are um, parallel to the picture plane and um, start to extend their edges to the vanishing point. Uh, but the other thing about one point perspective is that you can put almost anything that's parallel to the picture plane in one point perspective and it can be really fun. So for example, um, I can freehand a couple of things that are parallel to the picture plane. So let's say that, um, what should I do? So let's say that I make a squiggle. So I can turn the squiggle into something that is uh, three-dimensional. So let's say that I make this squiggle and I turn it into like a little noodle to give it a little bit of form. And let's say that the vanishing point for this noodle is here. So now what I can do is I can take the edges, like the uh, corners of each one of these um, squiggly lines, and I can point them to the vanishing point. This is just for fun. I mean, it's kind of, um, you know, you have to like really think about where the edge of that squiggle is, uh, but usually I just use my ruler until I, you know, hit the end of the form, and I know that I can put a line that, uh, there, you know, and I can extend it back towards that vanishing point. And then I don't want to just do one side. I want to do the other side as well. So if I um, put my ruler at the vanishing point and then put it towards the end of each of these forms, I'll see that for this squiggle, I would see one side and then it would turn around and I would also see this side of that squiggle um, if it was three dimensional. Uh, I wouldn't see anything there. My ruler is showing me that I don't really see uh, an edge there, but I do have one here. And then um, I think that I got all the other edges. So the other thing I can do once I have this is I can decide how to terminate this form. So I can just make a decision about how wide I want it to be. And then if I mimic the same slope and form of um, of the squiggle that I have and think about how this is sloping and, and uh, copy it a little bit further back and think about how this would actually go in and start to come back out. And this would go in and start to come back out. I can make this cool 
form that um, that is three dimensional. So that hopefully looks a little bit just really fun. I'm going to just shade in the part that's going back in space, and hopefully that will just give us a little bit of um, dimension. You can really start to see how that's going back in space. And then we can also do something like uh, create a 3D letter. Uh, so I'll show you guys how to do that as well. Yeah, you can really see that, that little doodle now looks 3D. <coughs> Excuse me. And then let's put a letter here. So um, my name is Rossi. Let's put a big letter R. Just make it kind of fun. And again, it needs to be parallel to the picture plane, so all of its... Um, sides are going to be parallel to the picture plane. You can just make it pretty dramatic. All my verticals are going to be vertical. They don't necessarily need to be in the case of a letter, but I think it will look cool. I kind of wish I would have curved the top of my R, but oh well, I made the decision, so I'm going to stick with it. So let's just do something like this. All right, that's a cool letter R. And let's point it to this vanishing point. So I'm going to take the bottoms of that letter and point them both to the vanishing point. Um, I'm going to take the bottoms of the other legs of that letter and point them to the vanishing point. Um, I'm going to take the interior of the letter here it's basically corresponding with the vanishing point, so I don't think that I would actually see that side. I'm going to take the edge of the R on this side. I'm going to point it to the vanishing point, as well as the interior of this letter. So now I can do what I just showed you guys with this. I can mimic the curvature of, uh, of that R, I'm creating the same curve. And then I can use my ruler to terminate the um, width of these uh, bottoms of that letter. And I can extend a vertical line and terminate that letter in this direction and across. So once again, I'm gonna use my pencil. I'm just gonna shade it in, in that interior so you guys can see the three dimensionality that happened as I extended that letter, those letters back towards my vanishing point. Okay, fun. So um, that's how you do one point perspective. You know, make sure that the object is parallel to the picture plane and then point all of its sides towards one single point.